Dealing with the bureaucratic crap is the hard part. And it seemed like everything in Germany, even to scratch your I was gonna say nose, even to scratch your nose. Hey everybody, today I'm going to discuss the worst part about living in Germany. And that is the bureaucratic process. <sighs> Every foreign person that is coming to Germany will go through a process that is very difficult to understand, difficult to process, it takes time, and it's stressful. It has made a lot of people give up and quit. Um, but I've made it, so can you. So let's get started. Now, before I get go even further, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I hope that you subscribe. Um, but notice, this bureaucratic process is not just difficult for us foreigners. Germans also find it very, very confusing sometimes, especially when it's something new. But there's one area that it seems like the Germans never have to go through, and that is the Auslander Beherder. So they don't understand it. Now, if you can imagine the worst DMV in America, and I'm talking about the people in the DMV in America sometimes are just so mean, so cruel, seem like they hate their job. Well, it seems that the, everyone that's like that in Germany work at the Ausland to be heard of. And they are very difficult to deal with. And a lot of times, I, I don't know if they're incompetent or they have a God complex. And what I mean by that is they know they control your fate, whether you get to stay in Germany or not. And they want to make sure they, that you know that. And they difficult. Now, before I go any further, I gotta really say, I've had it quite easy. <laughs> Compared to all the stories I saw on YouTube, stories I've read, talking to my friends and colleagues, I've had it quite easy compared to deal. I really don't have much to complain about because I've heard some of their stories. And that's why I wanna get to you, talk to you about it. So let's, so what are some things you're gonna face? I'll tell you some examples of some people that had a hard time. One of my colleagues uh, was going to get his residency permit. And you have a certain level of understanding. I don't remember if it's A1 or B1. I think it's B1. And uh, no, it is B1. And I think he has B2. <laughs> um, and he didn't ever take the B1 exam. But anyway, he went up there and on the paper, um, I, let me explain to me. So there's, there are different levels. You have level one, which is A1, level two, level three, level four, and not up to level six. Level six means that you're fluent. Um, and, but you gotta have at least level three. And my friend completed level four. He never took the level three test. He completed the level four of the language. In America, you know, we get by without knowing the language a lot of times. You hear about that. But in Germany, that's one of the requirements. <laughs> Um, so you have to do learn the language. You have to learn the language. Anyway, he had a level four. And he talked to a guy up there. And uh, the guy said, I need to see your level three document. My friend explained to him, I don't have the level three document. I have the level four. And the guy said, no, the paperwork says I need to see your level three. He said, Some, excuse me, sir, I don't have level three, but I do have level four. That means that I've completed all the levels previous. The man said, no, 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 I need to see your level three. And the guy kept harping on seeing this one document. He's like, but I have the better version of that. The guy would not let it go. And he, he, my colleague could not understand it. And of course, he had to leave the appointment and he had to figure something out. Sometimes that's the process. So when I say you need every piece of paper, every document, you do. For example, to get my, I finally got a job in the German school system. And... It took almost eight years for me to understand a process to get there. And I still can't tell you how I did it. There's a lot of my colleagues that have, won't, have tried and tried and tried, and they can't even get through the door. I've gone through many doors, many processes further than they have. And when I say they wanted to see everything, they only want, I, had, I have a master's degree. I have multiple master's degrees. But I showed them my master's degree. They said, no, we need to see your master's degree, your university degree, and your high school diploma. And it has to be recognized. And it has to be translated. And, 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 and. And so I had it recognized. I had it translated. I had it, and I had copies, and I had them all notarized. And finally said, okay, 
but now we need to see this next thing. And it seemed like they, they, there was always some, even though I thought I had everything, but they wanted to see every, they want to say, I'm like, well, I don't, I don't have my high school transcript. I have my college university degree. And I have my, not only do I have my diploma, but I also have the, um, my transcript. No, no, we need to see your high school as well. Well, I don't have that. So I had to call in, luckily everything is digital now. I had to just call the school or order one and they were able to send it to me. Um, and saving my birth certificate, I actually lost my birth certificate. I had to go get a copy of one, uh, an official copy in America. Um, but it's just, it can be very, very disheartening if you're trying to get these processes. And it's like no one, no one knows exactly. Even when you go to these offices, they don't know exactly what they're looking for. They have a list, yes. But even if you can put everything on the list, they still might say, no, I need this one document. Like, but you didn't mention that. Right? And then you ask them, well, how do I get that document? Sometimes they'll tell you, I don't know. I don't know. And I'm like, but you're supposed to know. You're the one in charge. The example I'm talking about now is my, I had a background check done in America. Before I came to Germany, I had an FBI background check done. Had a clean record, of course. I knew that before I came here. And I took it to the people. And they said, nope, we don't need that. We need your German background record. But I'm like, I've only been here a week. They said, nope, still, we need your German background record. But it's nothing. I've been, here's my background record that was just created. It shows my entire history of America. It even has the date on it. And you can see my, from my ticket stubs and my passport when I arrived in Germany. You can check it. They said, nope, we need to see a German one. So I said, well, how do I get it? The guy said, well, you should know that. <laughs> I, luckily, I had German contacts. They explained it to me. I got it done within five minutes, and I was able to go back to the place the same day. That was my experience. Um, but I'm thinking in my head, like, you telling me if I was a criminal from America, I have, I have a long rap sheet, but none of that would matter once I moved to Germany? Pfft, that's crazy. I did not understand it. But I realized. So I'm going to give you some tips to how I think it was easy for me. First of all, it varies from place to place. If you are in a major city, they probably have thousands of applicants per week trying to come in. And because they have so many, they don't have time to sit there and help you individually, make sure you have all your ducks in a row. They expect you to be ready so they can get, process you and get you going. Process, get you going. You're just a number. Process going. There's no hard feelings towards you. It's just a process that they're trying to do. So make sure you have your ducks in a row. Now, if you live in a smaller community like I live in, and because there's not as many applicants, they do have more time to treat you as a human being and help you get through the process and explain things to you. And it also helps if you try to speak their language and know their culture. And also, it helps if you organize. I brought in a folder that had, and I flipped through it. It said, we need document one. Boom. Put it out right in front. No, no hesitation. Don't bring in a manila folder that just has 100 pages in there and you have to go through it. No. Have it organized. I'm telling you something. Jeremy's <laughs> organization is like pillow talk. <laughs> and so he said, I need to see uh, part one. Boom. I put that right in front of him. He said, I need to see part two. Open it up, flip it. Boom. Part two. And copies right there. I mean, I'm telling you, I think he just started asking questions just to see how ready it was I, and if I could just pull it out and present it to him. And it was a game, to, I'm telling you, it's, it's like pillow talk. And uh, um, I was ready. <laughs> and, and I think they enjoyed it because the process, I, I knew the process, I was well organized, and it helped. Now, another thing, another tip for people is that understand the culture, understand your role, and understand the language. And I don't mean you have to be fluent, but try. See, when you try to speak their language, they know that you're trying. They don't want somebody, see, a lot of times, I'm not saying these people are racist, I'm not saying anything like that, but they have thousands of people coming through that just, and, and there's, in the back of their head, after hearing it and seeing it, and witnessing it probably, they're like, some of these people just come to get our benefits. That's it. But if they see someone that's actually trying to learn the language, trying to learn their culture, then I think it helps. I'm, I'm not saying I, um, I wore a cap that says I love Germany and a shirt like that. But 
I did know the language. I had my someone there with me always to translate. Um, that was German. But you know what? They never even spoke to that person. They only spoke with me. And I tried to speak. I do my Walmart smile and my Southern charm. And I would talk to them. And it seemed like my process just became easier. I was organized and I made an effort. That makes a big difference. See, people love hardworking people. I don't care how they feel about anything else. Hard work shows, effort shows to everyone. And they see when someone is trying. Because there's a lot of people that don't. And, I, and when they see this process, and you're working towards the goals, and they see that you're trying, I think people will soften up. It's like, it's like warming up to them and, soften, and making them soften. And it just shows. I mean. We know how some people feel. In the, if we come talk about our own country, we know how I feel when people just seem like they're taking advantage of our system. And they see someone that's actually trying, I think it makes a big difference. It helps. At least it, it seemed like it helped me. Because I, I can, let me tell you about all of my processes, for example. I only had three situations where it was God awful. It was one when I was trying to get into the German school system. This guy, but he was known apparently for causing a lot of trouble for everyone. And he gave me such a hard time and he even criticized the people I was trying to work for. Um, luckily, I found a way to work around him by accident and I was able to go around him and get my process done because um, the school wanted me. And then there was another situation where I had a, a guy who I think had gone through the process before. He didn't look German. And I think he wanted, to, because he had to work hard, he wanted to make me work hard. Those are the two situations that I've had. But other than that, um, I would go into these offices. Like I said, I was well prepared. I knew in advance what questions they wanted, what documents they needed. And uh, I would go in there and I would have someone there to translate with me most of the time, not every time. And I was coming in, I'll greet them. I'd say hello and I'd speak with them in German. And I'd throw my shoulders up, showing them that this I'm trying my best. And they would say, they somehow we'll get to the question like, how are you doing? And I would tell them how I'm doing. I'd say, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. And they'd say, no reason to be nervous. And they would always tell me that every single time. And they would look through my paperwork. They were scanning. They were asking me a couple of questions. But the majority of the time, they just looked at my paperwork, nothing else. And even when I got my residency permit, my wife called in advance to see what I needed. She told them. She, she talked to them. I was ready. And then I got there, and the, the lady just looked at me, looked at my papers, looked at me. At the very end, she asked me two questions. And I was like, that's it? And she said, yeah, that's it. She said, sir, if you look at your record, you have been, you've had a steady job, very important. Um, you've lived in the same place for multiple years. You are showing that you are consistent. See, that's something else. That you, follow, that you are not always changing, that you stay down that path and you continue. They don't want to see someone that's constantly changing jobs or changing places to live. They want to see some consistency. And she saw that in my paperwork. Same job, same living condition for the most part. <laughs> I'm married with the kid. Everything was down the road. I had all my documents, what I've been paid every year over the past five years. Um, everything was lined up. And I guess she didn't have to ask me any questions. She only made one comment. She said, you can't leave here. Oh, you have to stay in Germany. I said, I don't plan on leaving anyway. And she laughed. I laughed. And uh, that was it. That's how simple it is for me. I think the biggest problem that most people have when they come to a new country, and especially come to Germany, someone, somewhere, has sold them this dream ideal. And I think once they get to Germany, they think the dream, this, this, it's all going to be laid out in front of them. But no one never really tells you about that, no, getting here is probably the easy part. 
Dealing with the bureaucratic crap is the hard part. And it seemed like everything in Germany, even to scratch your, I was gonna say nose, even to scratch your nose, it seemed like you need paperwork for. You just can't come here and just start a job with anything. It seemed like every single job, and even if it's a mini job, not maybe not a mini job, but it's like every form of job, you gotta have a paper trail. And it has to be recognized in Germany. And see, people don't know that. They think they can come here, they can start fresh, and there'll be a process. No. If you're not prepared for it, you will fail. And if you don't have someone trying to help you, there's a good chance you will fail. And we like to, I'm gonna blame, no, there, these people can be mean, but they love consistency and they love organization. And they, it helps. And that's what I'm saying is very important. Watching this video helps, but know what you need because it changes from region to region. Know what's expected in your region. Be prepared. Learn the language and you can get through it. And you will be just like all the rest of the Germans after that. Everyone deals with all this paperwork crap. You just got to get used to it. I'm not saying it's going to get any easier, but it's definitely not impossible. Just be prepared. And with that, I'm signing out. Thank you.